Hello, everyone. I'm so lucky to give a presentation about our work. My name is Zheng Zhi, and I'm from University of Science and Technology of China. Today, I will give a little discussion about bias in recommendation. And here is my topic, context bias aware recommendation for debiasing user modeling and click prediction. In the era of information explosion, Personalized recommendation system has become a crucial component in user-oriented services. Usually, modern recommendation systems exploit user behavior data to infer user preference. For example, the rating scores in explicit feedback, the click records in implicit feedback, and various machine learning techniques can be used, such as matrix factorization, deep learning-based models, and so on. However, due to the existence of virus biases, it may be inaccurate to capture user preference directly from behavior records. In other words, the user real preference and user behavior are not consistent. Take the red picture as an example. The item one is at the top of the list with a very big picture. So it can attract the attention of almost all the users. Well, for item three, it may be struggle to get clicks just because it cannot attract users' attention. And this may lead to Matthew effect in recommendation. That is, the top items can always get many clicks. Along this line, large efforts has been made in recent years for learning to debase. However, uh, for example, methods based on click model and propensity score. However, most existing studies only study the biases caused by one specific item attribute, such as the position, the modality. However, in online platforms, usually multiple items will be displayed simultaneously, and user behaviors can be further affected by the interactions among these items. Take the red picture, for example. Users may click item A due to the top position or item B due to the video modality. Also, they may click item C or item D, but not both of them, since they have similar titles. Therefore, we propose a novel type of bias named context bias to describe the bias caused by item interactions. And we design a normal context bias on our recommendation model named CBR to solve this problem. Now let me introduce our data set used in this paper. The best data set in this paper comes from a large online medical content recommendation platform. In this platform, items with different modalities are shown to users and user modeling and collecting behaviors are collected. As shown in the figure, we format the user behavior data into impression logs. Each impression log records the items shown to a specific user and the detailed information of each item includes title, display position, and modality information. And then we split this best data into four parts as the best data, respectively user profile, training, validation, and testing data. Except for the best data set, in order to evaluate the debiasing ability of our model, we further need an unbiased data set, that is the uniform data. In the uniform data, only one item will be shown to a user at the same time. So there is no bias caused by attributes and interactions. After that, we can, we can define the pipeline for learning to debias. That is, we first need to train our model on user profile data and training data. Then we select the best model based on validation data. Finally, we test the best capture ability of our model on testing data and the best ability on uniform data. Know that the model need to infer real user preference totally based on best data. And now I will introduce the framework of our model in detail. Our framework mainly consists of three components, respectively content encoder, bias encoder, and user encoder. Specifically, we first design a content encoder to get the content embedding of an item based on the title. Then we propose a bias encoder based on multi-head self-attention to model the context bias corresponding to each item in an impression. After that, we design a user encoder to get the best user embedding and user preference embedding based on the user profile. Specifically, 
we design a device learning method to de extract the representation of real user preference from the best user embedding given the user behavior history. For the content encoder part, the content encoder consists of three sub-layers. The first sub-layer is a word embedding layer, which converts words into word embedding vectors. The second sub-layer is a multi-head self-attention layer, which can capture the contextual information of each word. And the final sublayer is an aggression layer, which selects important words to generate title representation. And based on these layers, given the title T, we can calculate the title embedding as follows with the layer norm and the softmax. And for the bias encoder part, given the impression, the bias encoder aims to capture the biases from context perspective. Therefore, we first embed different position and modality into different embeddings. Then, given the atom, we first fill this content embedding, position embedding, and modality embedding. Then, we further get the bias embedding by meta head self attention to capture the atom interactions effectively. And now, let me talk about the user encoder. Compared with traditional recommendation models, the core problem of the biasing user modeling is how to infer the real user preference from the biased behavior data. Therefore, we design a novel user encoder with, which uses both the click and unclick models and unclick atom to solve this problem. Given the user profile, we can first calculate the corresponding content embedding and bias embedding for each atom. Then we get the atom embedding by a fusion layer. After that, we get the best user embedding by attention layer. In this step, we only pay attention to the click atoms to capture the influence of biases. And now we need to infer user preference from the best user embedding. Under the influence of biases, it's hard to infer user preference from bias data directly. However, we can actually distinguish the content that the user dislikes from the unclicked atoms. That is, if the biases strongly promote the user to click an atom, but the user still did not click it, then we can know that the user really dislikes the content of this item. Based on this data, based on this idea, we can calculate the user negative preference from the unclicked atoms as follows. And now we need to infer user preference from the best user embedding. Given a specific atom, we suppose that the more dis dissimilar this atom is to the negative user embedding, the more likely it is to reflect the real preference of the user. We use the inner product to measure the similarity and the recommendation for user real preference is calculated as follows. And now let's talk about the training and testing method for our model. Given the user U and then at a, as an impression I see, we can get the best user embedding UB and the user preference embedding UP. We can also get the best embedding BCJ and the content embedding TCJ for item J in IC. Then we decompose the click probability to the sum of the preference score and the best score as follows. We train our model with cross-entropy loss. Furthermore, since there is no biases in the uniform data set, we believe that the user click behavior only depends on the user preference on the bias data, on the, on the uniform data. So the click probability on uniform data is only based on the preference score. To demonstrate the effectiveness of our model, we compared our CBR model with several baseline models and the results are shown in the table. We find that our model surpasses all the baseline methods on different evaluation metrics and on both bias data and uniform data. This clearly proves the effectiveness of our CBR framework and the necessity to capture the context bias. And what's more, to further evaluate the effectiveness of each component of our model, we also designed some ablation study experiments and the results are shown in the table. 
We studied both the effectiveness of our device learning process and the influence of different type of biases. The results verify the necessity for device user representation learning. And we further demonstrate the necessity to describe biases from context perspective. And in our paper, we further present several cases. And because of the limited time, I only select one of them for this presentation. In this case, we want to analyze the effect of different attributes. We randomly select some items and computed their bias embedding, and we projected them into two-dimensional space with T, S, and E. The figure shows the visualization results. We can find that the embedding corresponding to items at different positions and with different modalities forms different clusters, different clusters, uh, which indicates that different positions and modalities have different influences on users. And finally, let's take a summary. In this paper, we first propose a novel type of bias named context bias, which can describe the interactions when multiple items are shown to a user together. Then we design a normal context-based aware recommendation model named CBR to capture the influence of context-based and infer user preference from best user behavior data. Finally, we conduct extensive experiments on a real-world data set, which clearly validate the effectiveness of our CBR framework and reveal some interesting rules. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Thank you. Thank you very much for the nice talk. Uh, uh, we have one question in the chat. Uh, so the question okay. is how to evaluate the, uh, the biasing results for, for the position bias. The items in testing data is still exposed on different positions. And does uniform data refer to the, that items are randomly exposed in different positions? Okay, um, in the uniform data of our paper, there is only one item will be shown to a specific user. So there is no position bias and there is no item interaction since there is only one item. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, any I other questions? Yeah. Do we have any other so questions? Any other questions? Uh, I have some questions actually. One is um, you talk about modeling user preferences and the bias and so on, but what happens if you have a bit cold start cases, like you have a little or no data for the users? How, do, how does your model work then? Did you test? Well, uh, we select our data. So there is uh, uh, at least five history behavior data in our data set. So because we need uh, both the user profile data and the printing data to capture the user preference. So if there's no uh, interactions, uh, they, we cannot inference them. Okay, but what if you have limited, I think it would be an interesting experiment to add, add, add like uh, how much inter user interaction data do you need to be able to accurately or reliably infer these preferences? Maybe a study where you vary like the amount of data available for the users and the performance of the model could be an interesting one. Oh yes, the cold start problem is yeah, exactly. always a big problem. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and another question I had is regarding uh, the work related to novelty, like in information retrieval in context of ranking, there is some work uh, that focused on novelty-based ranking where you look at interactions between items, like given a, a, when you decide on how to rank an item at rank K, you incorporate its similarity and the context in rank one to K, K minus one. Is that something you looked at as well? How do you, uh, how do you see this work differ from those? Well, uh... Uh, I think uh, the works you said is the uh, re-rank. Is that re-rank? Uh, re-rank, but also like just uh, regular ranking. Uh, how do you, uh, there is some work on novelty-based ranking where you incorporate novelty or contextual information into ranking well, as well. well. Okay. okay. Of course, the focus is In very regular different. Regular ranking. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, actually, the uh, regular ranking is is always maybe um, one user to one item and calculate a preference score. But uh, in our uh, problem problem definition, we need to calculate the uh, influence of multiple items to one user. So uh, there is uh, there is um, some works uh, um, on a context or a re rank, but uh, uh, this is a uh, a little similar to our work, but uh, the, the regular rank is uh, not very similar to our work. Okay. And uh, thank you. Uh, we have one more question about the data set actually. So can you share uh, the uniform data set is, is the question. Okay, is this on the chat room? Yeah. Okay. Could you so, please yeah. share the uniform data? Uh, yes, uh, um, actually this is the uh, data set in Tencent and maybe they will not agree to release the data set, but uh, um, uh, have, uh, maybe, maybe in some days we can uh, share the uh, ID and the uh, nominal history. And, but th this is, uh, you, you know, this is um, maybe not uh, now, maybe not now. So not the entire data set, but some part of it? Uh, yes, since uh, because the core problem is that the data in our, uh, the, the title and the content uh, in our data set is uh, co cost our company a lot of money to, to have them, so they may not prefer to release them. Okay, thank you.